Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our virtual cultural exchange between Morocco and Gibraltar. This event is organized jointly by the Gibraltar Morocco Business Association, of which Mr. Clive Reed is president, and Straits of Gibraltar Association, of which Mr. Brahim Krikas is president. I am Henry Sacramento, your host this evening. Today, we feature the novel Invisible Threads, which was published four years ago. Before I introduce the author, let us see some photos taken whilst writing the novel and culminating with the book launch in Gibraltar. Big thank you has to go for Mr. Abdelhani Kukus for editing and producing that small video. Let me introduce the author. Priscilla Sacramento, Neely Naris, was born in Downpatrick in Northern Ireland. Her parents, Juan Linares and Regina Borge, had been evacuated during the Second World War. Victoria, the elder sister, had been born in London and Brenda, the youngest, was born in Gibraltar. They grew up in a poor area known as the Barracone de los Classi in Gibraltar. Priscilla went to college in England and qualified as a teacher, later went into special needs education and had a very successful career being head teacher of St. Martin's Special School for 20 years. She retired in September 2002 as the first special needs education advisor. During her retirement, she dedicated much of her time to another of her passions, designing and making haute couture dresses and hats. She joined Women in Business and served as a committee member and chairwoman for a number of years. Eventually, she dedicated time to a long life ambition, writing a novel. A lot of research and planning went into the preparation of this book, including trips to southern Spain and Morocco. 
The book got shelved a number of times due to involvement in other more pressing projects such as pageant dresses. In 2016, Invisible Threads was published and launched on Amazon. In September that year, it was officially launched in Gibraltar, having received very good reviews in the USA. Two years ago, she was one of the authors invited to take part in the Gibanco Literary Festival. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the author, who not only shares the patronage of the Straits of Gibraltar Association with me, but everything else as I am her husband. Priscilla, welcome to this virtual event. Uh, it really is a pleasure to have you here and to be able to have the honor of interviewing you. Um, how does it feel? It feels great. Thank you very much. And thank you for the lovely introduction, Henry. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, and talking of introductions, um, before we start talking about your book, read to us that great review mm. that was given to the book. Yes, had a few very, very good reviews. This one is from Pacific Book Review by uh, S. Marie Vernon. And it reads, Invisible Threads is a progressive and adventurous romantic fiction written by Gibraltar's businesswoman, Priscilla Sacramento. It's a love story that begins a generation before that of Maria Jesus and the love of her life, Pepe. Their forbidden love is so, so very strong and it will not be denied. It sets in motion a secret that will be carried to future generations before it can be solved. The tale spans the entire 20th century and is centered in the regions of Spain, Gibraltar and Morocco, where the Roman Catholic, Christian and Islamic religions are as strong as they are different. Within this third person narrative, much is revealed about the religion and culture of the Spanish, the Muslims and the English people alike. In particular, the hardships of women are emphasized. The author navigates her story well, as she describes how these families survive war troubled times, as well as their inevitable belief changes that occur from one generation to the next. For instance, women become more independent. They don't want to be just the property of men and have their babies as the main purpose in life. Some will wait until they are much older to marry and plan on contributing to their family income by starting small businesses of their own. It's not always easy, but change does occur. The book is timely and offers gentle encouragement for our troubled times. The evening of December the 31st, 1999 is most exciting and proves to be auspicious in several ways. Families have come together from all the surrounding regions. Pat and Tito Garcia have invited all their immediate family, their distant relatives and many friends to Gibraltar for this special gathering. The children are dressed in their finest attire, as well as the grown-ups. The Garcia party has unknowingly brought together a lost family and they celebrate with zeal and enthusiasm to bring in the 21st century with the best of everything. They want to enter the new millennium celebrating family, peace, harmony and prosperity for all. At the deepest level, Invisible Threads is a story about women's issues, the diversity of people, changing times, and as Priscilla Sacramento beautifully describes, the collective striving of the human species. While seemingly invisible, the day-to-day -day lives of every everyday people reveals how small the world is and how connected we all really are. An invisible link becomes visible to us as we see human beings strive for love and happiness in an unpredictable world. This is a delightful yet serious 
romantic fiction that will speak to the heart of women and romantic fiction lovers everywhere. Also, it will speak to anyone who wants insight into the history and culture of the regions of Spain, North Africa and British rule Gibraltar. All different in beliefs and customs, yet similar in the desire for love, happiness and meaning in their world. Wow. Uh, first question I need to ask you, Priscilla, is what inspired you to write a novel and why the title of Invisible Threads? Well, what inspired me to, to write a novel um, goes back very, very many years. When I was a, a child, my mother um, used to read out uh, novels or um, parts of a novel that uh, she used to get in Spanish, we were in Gibraltar, and this man from Spain would come in every week with just a few pages of a novel. It was like a series. And uh, because my mother could read and write both in English and in Spanish, she was one of the very few that could do that way back at the time, all the ladies that lived nearby would flock to our house, to our kitchen, and or to the front door and sit in the patio there while my mother read the novella, the novel. And, uh, and of course, that they, they would then have a chat about it and so on. I was thrilled to be there. I wasn't really supposed to be there. I was only a chiquilla, a niña, a girl, but I loved being there. And uh, as long as I behaved myself, they allowed me to be there. I loved it. And I often heard my mother say, one day I will write a novel. Yo voy a escribir una novela. I am going to write a novel. And those words stayed in my mind. Unfortunately, uh, my mother became ill and, and she died quite young. So she never got the opportunity to write her novel. Um, and the years went by and as Henry has pointed out, I got this urge, this need to write a novel and didn't seem to find the time to do it. But at some point, with his help, I did get round to it and wrote Invisible Threads. My second question uh, is why the title Invisible Threads? I mean, those of us that know you as a designer, haute couture, uh, milliner, because you, I, I, even if I say so myself, you are a very talented, gifted, artistic and intelligent lady. Uh, how did you come up with the title of Invisible Threads? Well, obviously the word threads came in because of my other passion, of my passion for, for sewing and, and so on. Um, but really, uh, Invisible Threads, it's to me, it's something, it means tying up or connecting uh, people, events, uh, whatever, things, you know, uh, but not obviously. Hence the invisible threads, the invisible connections. Okay. Um, tell us a bit how the experience of actually um, spending time in a Casbah home, because we, we rented on two different occasions, and the how it was for you to physically be there eight hours a day, um, very disciplined, I must say. Um, ex explain to us how that came about. Well, you know, as, as we've, we've said before, you were the one who encouraged me <laughs> to get on with it and not just think one day I will write a novel, you know. Uh, so, yes, I started doing that. I started taking notes and, and thinking what would I want to include and so on, you know, planning it. And um, it, it was, in a way, it, it was a pleasure, very much, but also hard work in the sense of having to organize it and, um, you know, how, how I wanted to the, the, the different stories to evolve and where I wanted some invisible threads to join characters, 
even though they themselves perhaps did not realize that they had a connection. One question that most readers uh, kept asking, uh, how could you have killed Maria Jesu, one of the main characters, at such an early stage of the book? I know. Everybody asks me, and uh, I know many people haven't forgiven me for doing that, and I am sorry, but it was just one of those things. I had to include the unexpected, and perhaps, you know, the, the unexpected death of, of someone maybe had a kind of connection at the back of my mind with, with what happened to my mother. But obviously, there is no other connection there. It is not a story about my mother. It's not a story about me. Um, it's, it's all fiction, although there are a lot of factual things included. Oh, Carmen, thank you very much, says Priscilla has a wonderful legacy. Um, another of the questions you partly answered, um, any of the events that happen in the book, are they based purely on fiction or have relations or friends actually um, live through that? Well, in fact, it's, it's a bit of both because um, what I did not want is for anybody to read the book and, and you know, find their neighbor's story or their mother's story or whatever. So it is not the story of anyone in particular, but there are sometimes incidents that have happened that really happened to real people. And, um, you know, I've merged it into the stories so that you could not identify uh, the incidents with uh, real people unless you actually know that person. But, you know, as I say, I've fictionalized everything very much um, while hopefully uh, keeping it real. Thank you, Priscilla. So uh, well, we have uh, our, our president asking, um, Priscilla, which of the characters did you like most and which character did you like the least in your book? Oh, <laughs> now there's a difficult one. Aquí se tiene que mojar. Oof, oof, <laughs> oof. Uh, oh, which is my favorite? I don't know. Pepito or Papito, like you oh, called Pepito him. Pepito or Papito, you had most a, definitely. You had a I had a crush spot. on him. Yeah. <laughs> sí, 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 sí. Pepe, yeah. I dare say. Sí. Pepito or Papito, yes, Pepe. <laughs> and of course, there were, you know, some characters that um, just happened to be passing by. Uh, and not as nice as I was one would like people to be. But then again, you see, um, sometimes, I mean, we're all human. Sometimes we do things in our lives and it might not be necessarily typical of us, but we do something which is not nice, something which might even be cruel. Um, hopefully, when that happens, that person moves on and becomes a better person, not necessarily as a result of something they've done, but as a result of some other situation in their lives. So hopefully, as we grow older, we grow wiser and hopefully more loving. Thank you. We have a, a note from Sonia Gold. Sonia, thank you for joining us. Sonia is also a, an amazing author herself and an amazing woman in so many other ways. Uh, and she says, more beautiful moments to reminisce about in the future. Writing is an incredible pastime, as is reading. So we all benefit here, Priscilla, for writing it and us for being able to read it. Congrats to you both for this connection between Gibraltar and Morocco. Great idea. Thank you very much, Sonia. That was more of a comment than a question. Um, Thank you. But, um, oh, we have uh, Mr. Marine Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Is the book, is the book reflects any parts of your life or is it fiction? I think you've, you've answered that question, mm -hmm. that it's based on, on fiction. Much as though everybody tried to uh, <laughs> identify uh, and, and, and what, what I, happened to what I always said, the sexual, the sex scenes were all based on our real bedroom uh, oh, activity. Don't, don't be like uh, that. Don't when, be naughty. <laughs> I'm being naughty here. And we have um, uh, Zanath. Is the book available in Morocco bookstores? Well, um, it's not available in Morocco at the moment. It's it is 
available on Amazon, even as an ebook. You can buy it as an ebook. It's available in Gibraltar at the moment in paperback. And maybe, Priscilla, you can tell us a bit more as to where it is available in Gibraltar. Yes, you can get it at the Heritage Shop um, and at the museum, the Gibraltar Museum, and of course, directly from, from myself, from ourselves, by sending us a message, uh, whatever suits you, message, email. I mean, on, we're on Facebook, so it's not all that difficult to get hold of us. And um, a WhatsApp, you know, send a, send me a message and we'll see if, if we can actually hand it to you here in Gibraltar, uh, if I can dedicate it to you, if that's what you want. Um, similarly, um, it may be possible to get you a copy in, in Tangier, if, you're, if you happen to be in Tangier. I hope that answers the question. And we have a comment from Simi. Simi Herbert, thank you very much, Simi, for joining us. And Simi says, Congratula congratulations, Priscilla, and also to the lovely Henry. Yeah, oh. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have uh, Nuruddin, Nuruddin Temsimani. Marhabibikum, welcome to the event. And he says, good evening, guys. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Congratulations, Priscilla. Well, thank you very much. Um, something that a lot of people ask, you know, how long did the book actually take to write? And why did it take you so long to publish the book? Well, the, to be honest, I can't even say how long the book took to write because I, you know, I wrote maybe quite solidly for a couple of months and then left it for a few months and so on. So it's very difficult to say, I mean, if I were to say, uh, uh, I took four years writing the book. That's ridiculous. There's no way I was writing the book for four years. But it's it was a period of time when from time to time I was able to spend a little time or maybe a little bit longer uh, working on the book. Um, and then, as Henry pointed out before, you know, I actually spent some time in Tangier, especially to tie it all up, to finish it off, and, and have it ready for, for publishing. Fantastic. And, I, I, and I'll add to that that um, the two large chunks of the book were written on two different occasions in Tangier, in the Casbah, with a two-year gap in between the first one and the second one. And um, interestingly enough, you know, who would have said then that we would end up buying a house two minutes away from the house that we rented at the time. We have uh, Fatima from Casablanca uh, says a lot of thanks, Mrs. Sacramento, for this opportunity to know more about your book. My question, what category or genre do you think it fits into? Well, def sorry, definitely fiction, romantic fiction. You know, it's about life. So there's a little bit of everything in there um, yes it's... i think uh, if i may say so myself priscilla you also describe uh, in quite some detail um the differences and similarities between catholicism in the south of spain um the way of life in gibraltar because all the historical facts that you mention in the book such as the uh, closing of the frontier, the opening of the frontier, and other very important historical events, not only in Gibraltar, but in Morocco and Spain, are all accurate and um, not fictional. Those things actually happened. Um, so thank you very much for that yeah. question. And, you know, I've, I've described um, events which, like, laid Kabir in... in in Morocco and, and uh, other events, for example, based in, in, in the Spanish culture or the British based in Gibraltar. So I've, uh, I've brought them into the story uh, and explained what happens on those events, on those days, those celebrations, you know, um, just so that it's there for everybody else to, to know. Thank you, Priscilla. And we have, oh, Tracy. Hello, Tracy. She says, congratulations to you, Priscilla and Henry, of course. Cannot wait to see the series. Uh, well, 
the Tracy, by the way, you're getting your book tomorrow morning, hand delivered by our son Etienne. It's already in his bag. You will be getting it tomorrow morning. Ali says, congratulations. Thank you very much, Ali, for joining us. Um, yes. Can you explain a little bit about? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, some of the, because I've had a, a number of, um, of reviews of my book, and uh, usually they say that because it spans a, a, a long period of time, and the, the area, you know, and, uh, and there are so many stories within that, that the book is, is uh, a go good to make a series, for example, uh, a television series. Uh, as opposed to a a film um, and uh, at the moment I am in the process of uh, having it um, viewed by some a couple of script writers and hopefully you know that I will be able to give good news on that soon hello Christine thank you for joining us that was one of the questions that I had lined up and Christine says will there be a second book there is and I promise it will not take another four years it's not finished yet but I'm getting there and I, I think uh, the next question would be Peter, we have Stephen Priscilla would you have your book translated into Arabic uh, interestingly enough um, the book would actually uh, showcased by British Horizons in Tangier and there was talk about getting the book translated into Arabic uh, but unfortunately nothing came came of it and it's something that I think we could pursue at some point inshallah um, we have James Levy who who says who's your favorite author of all time uh, and your favorite book by them Priscilla oh my goodness my goodness, too many, <laughs> too many, too many. I, I, I dare say that as a teacher, you must have read loads of books, especially mm -hmm. the ones that you used. Um, but I, I, I can say that one of the first books that I remember noticing in, in our um, bookshelf was the complete works of William Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Did he inspire you in any way and... Uh, I, I can't really say that it inspired me, you know, reading Shakespeare. I enjoyed it at the time and, uh, you know, obviously it was part of my education as I was uh, growing up and in school and so on. But I, I like to read different types of, of, of books, different stories, fiction more than non-fiction. But, um, yeah, I find it difficult to say so and so. See, I mean, uh, we have uh, Nora from New York is asking what techniques uh, you have used, Mrs. Priscilla, to tell the story. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. What techniques to, to tell the story? Um, well, I, I, I can, I can use maybe... Uh, help you out. I can tell you that uh, Priscilla is the most disciplined and organized person that you possibly could meet. As an amazing head teacher, she had the storyline all written out, the timeline, all the characters, yeah. description, even before she started writing the book. So it was like so much infrastructure went into the preparatory work of actually writing is yet but yes. cuando va a empezar estamos a escribir el libro you <laughs> yes, know? i'm not sure I, if that's where you were going with your question but definitely yeah. that is so me yeah that is so me See, have sorry you said we, that? we had sorry. a question there from julia oh there you julia from gibraltar hello julia thank you for joining us i'm a new mother i like to read the book to my child did someone read to you when you were a child well yes M my mum would read you know like the we didn't have many books in those days <laughs> i'm going back uh, a long time here um and of course not only did she read to us uh, she encouraged us to read i always liked learning and learning to read and reading so um yeah 
See, I, I, I think uh, the more, uh, and I think um, you mentioned that your child is three, and of course, the, nowadays there are so many books available, suitable for every age range. Um, remember, uh, everything you can do with your children. Um, some people sometimes ask ask us over that, what is the best thing you invested in your children? And I always say time. If you can invest time in your children, those are the memories they will have when they grow up. What you did with them, what the stories you told them, and what you did together as a family. So the quest, the answer to your question is, by all means, read as much as you can uh, to your children. Yes, and I'm sure that they will really appreciate it. Sorry, we had a question there. Uh, Sara Adolfo is asking, has a book ever changed your life? Can't think of a particular book that's changed my life, but I suppose having read, you know, over the years, uh, I'm sure I was influenced by what I read, apart from, you know, the life I was living uh, here in Jebo when I was studying in England and so on. But to be honest, I can't really pinpoint um, an incident, a book like that. Sorry. I think may maybe to so our, our viewers can understand a bit more. Um, when you went to study in the UK, uh, it wasn't the done thing by women. And Ooh. you you were one of the very, very few. Very few of, of the girls from Gibraltar in particular, you know, mm. I'm, I'm talking about Gibraltar now. And uh, very, very few of, of the sort of late teenagers, um, early 20s, very few of them went to study in the UK. Uh, it, it had to be in the UK, obviously, because of the um, political situation and all the rest of it. Um, and and there wasn't lot. the technology. Okay, oh, somebody, goodness. somebody who has grown up with an iPhone or Wi-Fi can't even begin to think that, for example, and, and I and I say this because you you've mentioned it on, on occasions, how you found out about your um, grandmother passing. Oh my goodness! Yes, I was actually in the UK in college at the time, and my father, my late father, sent a telegram to me in college. Now the telegram went to the head teacher, uh, the nun in charge of, of uh, the college. And when she saw, you know, uh, uh, that my, my grandmother had passed away, uh, she didn't just uh, pass on the telegram, you know, she called me into the office and, and asked me who, who was, no, not was, who is Mama Elena? And I said, oh, my grandmother. And she said, well, I've got bad news. And she explained that she had passed away and so on. But, you know, it's something like that. My dad could not even phone and tell me in those days, mm -hmm. look what's happened. Never mind, you know, use use uh, an iPhone or, or the social media that we have these days. It, it, life was so, so different. Mm, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Priscilla. Oh, Adelaide, hello. Thank you very much for joining us. And Adelaide says, Priscilla, what's your advice to anyone who is thinking of writing a book? Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Get on with it. Do it. Just do it. Indeed. Um, start whichever way feels best for you. I Because I like to have everything organized, I, I would make notes, write it down, as Henry explained, timeline, all the rest of it. But even if it's just jotting things down or noting them in your telephone or whatever, you know, like notes, what uh, what's it going to be about? You know, what what's the big deal here? How do you want it to end? What effect do you want it to have on people? Do you want people to be, you know, do you want it to be a happy book, happy all the time or most of the time? Uh, there's always got to be a little bit of, um, you know, if it's a happy book, there's got to be something which is not quite happy just to give it that contrast similarly everything can't be sad and everything you know there's got to be uh, a little variety. bit of variety in in but it's very important you know as soon as you get a thought 
I, at least uh, that's the way I see it. As soon as you get a thought of how to do it or what characters to use to, to bring in or whatever, um, note it down somewhere or other so that when you get more and more thoughts, more and more ideas, you don't forget the one that you had way back at the beginning and you put it into the story somewhere if you still want to have it, of course. We have a uh, Nuruddin, thank you for joining us, Nuruddin. He says, I hope that your book will stay longer as the Coronation Street as TV story. How <laughs> kind, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, what a lovely comment. And uh, Alan Becker Smith says, I can't wait to read your book, Priscilla. And we also have Samira from Rabat that says, Your book cover is so lovely. For me, mm. the two hands is like Africa holding the hand with Europe. What's your favorite cover, book cover? Well, maybe you can tell us how how we came about um, designing the yeah, yeah. cover yeah, yeah. and how... Yes. The cover does... Uh, the light's not shining See, on it. In the um, right there, but so in the slideshow, it, it showed, and at this point, I think we need to credit the artist, Rosina Rosado, who actually painted... Um, the cover one and it's in a picture yes. and basically i mean we've seen two hands we've seen two hands there i mean we actually used henry's hand and mine and the hands are a little bit apart like wait where am i here a little bit apart there's like my that hand, there. oh there's your hand there. but there. it's like as if he's holding the thread. the thread and i'm holding the other end of the thread mm. It's invisible, but it's connecting us. See, and, and the actual scenery is the Straits of Gibraltar, which is the view from our apartment with Jebel Musa in the background, Algeciras and Tarifa on the right, Jebel Musa on the left, and of course, Tanja in the background. So that is basically um, what the book cover is. And uh, we have Youssef, he says, hello from Morocco to all our friends. Thank you, Youssef, for joining us. Um, wow, amount of people that I see from all over the place. <laughs> wow. Um, and of course, Priscilla, another question that I think um, most people must be asking is, is your next book a sequel or a follow-up to this one, or is it a completely different a uh, book with completely different characters and are you prepared to share this with us at this stage well you know me Maybe. that's why i'm asking <laughs> you <laughs> i do my notes i keep this to myself to the last minute um yeah that's very much how i am but actually i will i will say that what i have done is i have kind of pulled out just a few a very few the characters out of invisible threads and I'm concentrating on their lives that's all you're getting from me okay and we have Christine that says do you want the book to stand on its own or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between the next book mm, I haven't really thought about a next book I mean obviously I'm into the second one um, so I, I really can't honestly answer that one because I may, I may decide not to write uh, another book. If I write another book, I may actually pick out, as I've done here uh, with my second one, pick out some characters and develop them. Um, just something that might strike me at the time. Okay, it's a, we have a comment, says Priscilla, in our world, the timing for reading going, unfortunately, less and less. What's your advice to the generations to get more time to read and develop the imagination? Mm. Yes, I know it's difficult. And with all the technology nowadays, it makes it even more difficult for very many people to pick up a physical book. But the good thing about the technology and nowadays is that you don't have to be reading a physical book and you can read it on your phone. You know, there's, there's different ways of doing it. So uh, that might appeal to some 
from people, perhaps younger people, who can't live without the phone in their hands. And uh, once they start reading a book and get into it, can't put it down, like so many of you have said about mine, <laughs> then they will, you know, uh, continue to read it because they don't have to be in, a, a, you know, they don't have to have a physical book in their handbag or in their pocket or wherever it is that they are. They can actually read anywhere if they want to. I mean, w one of the little anecdotes that I want to share is that we were in Tangier in the uh, Café Tinges having a, a mint tea. And uh, we were introduced to this American lady and this good friend of ours said, oh, this is Priscilla Sacramento's famous author from Gibraltar. And she said, oh, uh, and, and within minutes she downloaded the book from Amazon. So, you know, there and then she was able to. to... <laughs> it's as easy as that. Exactly. Now. <laughs> it's yeah. as easy as that. Yeah. Uh, but there the will, the will be generations like us that will always prefer the book, have it in your hand, uh, fold the pages, uh, <laughs> yes. and, and let it gather dust as well, and keep, then pick keep it up. Keep the bookmark in it. <laughs> yeah. Priscilla, anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, you know, comments that people have made. Um, well, um, one that people do keep saying all the time is, you know, the typical phrase, couldn't put it down. And, and they really, I can see that they mean it, you know. I, and uh, they, they say, oh, I picked it up on such a day. And, you know, like two days later, I finished it. And I was trying, you know, not to do anything except work, eat, read. <laughs> when you were writing the book, uh, did it ever occur to you that it would have that kind of an impact in your readers did you because i know how important it was for you to actually write the book but once you actually had written it and it took you a while to publish it and you you it took some encouraging for obviously bulldozing you into getting <laughs> on with it uh, did you ever think that it would have this kind of an effect not really and to be honest i wasn't thinking of uh, the people who are going to be reading my book I needed to have that effect on myself, sort of thing, you know? I wanted my novel to be like it's turned out to be. For me, it was like I couldn't put it down, so to speak, you know? Although I did quite often to be doing other things, but it was always in my head. It was always there. It was always at the back of my mind. Oh, yes, I'm going to include so-and-so, or I must get on with, you know? We have another question from Christine, and Christine says, uh, what is the most difficult part of writing for you? Mm. Getting started. <laughs> Getting started, uh, for example, on the book, but also if I leave it for a while because I'm doing other things, then getting back into it. That's the difficult part yeah. for me. And Stephen says, do you think this sort of cultural event fosters relationships amongst countries? Yes, I do think so, and I really hope so, because it's, you know, it, it gives the opportunity for different people, like we are now in touch with you, um, in different countries, <laughs> and, and it's wonderful, you know, and of course it doesn't have to be about a book, it can be about whatever else, yes, yes. We have Faye from Gibraltar that says, where do you usually discover new books? Uh, Physical bookstores, online, social media? I, I'm very much the physical book person, certainly. Uh, though, you know, for example, in Gibraltar, it's very difficult to get hold of physical books nowadays. Um, we don't really have bookshops like we used to have. Um, I'm very grateful that the, the Heritage uh, Bookshop and also um, the museum, the local museum here in Gibraltar, have copies of my book. And Christine says, how do you do research for your books? Now, that's an interesting one. <laughs> I can actually tell you, Christine, that Priscilla, who is an atheist, we actually went one year to Jerez and lived the whole Easter week going to every single procession dressed with peineta, mantilla, and all the works, just to absorb the atmosphere. And 
what was that like for you, Priscilla? <laughs> it was it was actually kind of enjoyable. Some moments were kind of deep and serious. Um, because, yes, of course, I, uh, as Henry has said, I'm an atheist, I'm, I'm not a, a believer, but I was brought up to believe. So I remember the days when I believed, uh, and, you know, certain things, and uh, then over the years things changed for me, obviously. Um, so, you know, being like getting back into something like La Procesión, the procession, uh, was like a bit reminiscent of when I was younger, reminiscent of what had meant a lot to me at a given time, uh, then thinking about why, you know, the difference in the way I think about things now, why do I think about it like this, how do I feel, so yeah. And I think that we have to mention at this stage, my late mother had no idea how much she contributed to some certain aspects of the book. Because one of the things that you mention in the book a lot is La Virgen del Carmen, no? And my mother was a great devotee of the Lady of Mount Carmen. And uh, she, she had no idea how, by re, re, retelling her youth and how how she was brought up and, and her Catholicism helped Priscilla uh, certainly. with a certain character certainly, certainly. Of, of the book. Yes. <laughs> and, and also, you know, uh, we went back to the places that she had mentioned because obviously she was, she was Spanish originally. Uh, so we went back to the places she had mentioned uh, and and that formed part of, you know. Um... And I, I think we also need to mention that again, not only did we do the processions on Easter, but we also lived the Feria de Jerez, oh, and yes. you dressed up with your traje de gitana, y yo con el traje corto. Yes. And you know, we certainly enjoyed the drinking of it. Eh? At the time, it was really really <laughs> enjoyable. Um, and in Morocco, we've well, done yes. so many ceremonies. I, I, and... Oh, hi from Milan, Carmen. Thank you for joining us Ooh. all the way from Milan, Italy. I mean, we haven't even begun to mention, you know, that because over the years we've traveled so extensively in Morocco and we have very, very good friends, especially in Casablanca, Halid and Siham, and we have actually um, lived with them through weddings and uh, newborns, even funerals, you know, so we, we've, we've not just researched it, but We've lived, lived through it. all those experiences. So those experiences that Priscilla talks about in the book where she mentions the death of somebody, uh, the burial, um, we've actually lived them. So we, 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 we actually were able to talk about it firsthand and all that mm. helps. Mm. Um, so yes, a, a lot of research went into... Yes, we, there were times when I was specifically wanting to, to get a feeling or, or to research, to look at a place so that I would really be able to describe it, you know, things like that. Mm. But um, a lot of it also happened naturally uh, when we went to visit for whatever reason. So, you know, that has got added into, into the book mm. somewhere along the way. Oh, hello, Morad. Thank you for joining us. And he says, um, is there a book club in Gibraltar and Tanger that I can join? Hmm. Well, in Gibraltar, we have the John McIntosh Hall Library, uh, which obviously you, you need to join. Yes, it's that, it's a bit a... of a club. Mm. Um, I know in Tangier, uh, there is an, a, an English reading club, uh, which I'm sure we can, if you, if you leave your contact details, I'm sure we would be able to mm. forward the contact as to how you could join. But one of the beautiful things in Tangier especially is that there are still quite a number of bookstores mm. and even bookstores that sell books in English. So that could be a, a, an option for you. Oh, Christine. Thank you, Christine, for asking. What was the highlight of writing the book? Mm. Oh. <laughs> the highlight? Just one? <laughs> now that's difficult. <laughs> See, I, I, I think that in, in order for um, people that are tuning in understand the first time that i said to priscilla mira the only way you're going to get on with writing the book is if we 
go away from Gibraltar. You're not uh, interrupted by a ringing telephone, no internet, nobody can knock on our door. So we just rented this little house in the middle of the Casbah where we knew absolutely nobody and nobody knew us. Although I can tell you by the end of the week, everybody knew who we were. Uh, and you just got on with, uh, but we also enjoyed the evenings. I mean, those evenings on that terrace, mm. I mean, that is where we, re I mean, it, it was like falling in love again with the Tangier that yes. we had discovered many years ago. And um, as a result of that, every time we went back to Morocco, be it to a wedding in Casablanca, we always included uh, a night stay on the way there, on the way back from Tangier. So I think yes. that part and parcel of what writing the book was, was the enjoyment that we got out of it and the people that we met along the way mm, definitely which would obviously be too many to mention mm. um brahim is asking are there any books you could read over and over again and never get bored of i can't think of any in particular but that doesn't mean <laughs> he's biased i've read it four times already <laughs> Yeah. No, for me personally, and, and especially now in recent years, um, th that's a difficult one for me to, to answer, quite honestly. Um, hmm. Oh, um, hi, Mohammed. Hi from Tetuan, Morocco. Thank you, Mrs. Priscilla, for your book. Do you believe that books can help us reduce anger and hatred between people from different places? Yes, of course. Yes. Mm. And, you know, if you, and th there are books that explain, um, for example, I hope that I've done that in mind, uh, the differences in cultures, or they point them out, not necessarily point them out as this is different to that, but, you know, you, you, you read about something in one country, then you read about something, a similar kind of event, but treat it in a different way in the other, mm. and so on. So all of that is, is um, you know, what helps. Mm. I mean, oh, Nuruddin, thank you. Priscilla, did you get inspired for your next book through your long coronavirus quarantine in Tangier, including the holy month of Ramadan? By the way, how was your experience both for you and Henry Sacramento and Priscilla Sacramento doing strict mm. fasting? So the, Nuruddin, thank you very the, much for your sorry, question. The quick, the quick answer to the question about getting inspired during um, during the COVID, the COVID lockdown. No way. <laughs> In fact, I had already started my second book when COVID started, and I have found it uh, distracting. I haven't been able to get back to the book properly. Mm. Yeah. The, the, the one Which, thing that COVID did do for you is that you took your walking more seriously because <laughs> you couldn't leave the house yes. and you'd walk six kilometers on the terrace every day yeah. and you not book related yeah but you took it. part in the in the lunar walk yes. uh, to to create awareness for breast cancer um and the the other question that uh, Nuruddin was asking was ramadan how ramadan was for us mm. we have to say at this stage is that we're not Muslims, we're not religious in that way at all, but we have a young man that works for us. He's been working for us for over three years now, Abdul Hani. I hope you're watching. Hi. Um, and of course, he is Muslim and he was going to be doing Ramadan. And we thought um, for ease of the running of the household, it would be much easier if both Priscilla and I did Ramadan with Abdul Hani, it would make our coexistence during a difficult time uh, much easier. better and easier. Mm. And the truth be said is that we managed the 30 odd days quite well. Mm. Yes, I was, I was quite surprised, really. Mm. I mean, <laughs> about we, me. Anyway, we, I know we, Henry would have managed. We it. have to say that but, uh, we, we usually fast one day a week anyway and our fasting goes a bit further than what islam requires during ramadan because we basically uh, have our last meal on a sunday night and we don't have anything other than water until 
Tuesday breakfast. Mm -hmm. So we, we're used to going for many hours, mm -hmm. uh, days. So once a week. Once a week without eating. So that in itself was not difficult. But we found the whole experience to be a beautiful experience because the whole ambience, the, the call to prayer is, is, is almost sounds more beautiful to the ear than throughout the, 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 the rest of the year. And I think also because we are the only uh, non-Muslim neighbors in the area where we live, as our neighbors got to find out that we were doing Ramadan, they all thought, you know, quite highly of us because we didn't have to do it. We were doing it because we chose to, uh, because of Abdul Hani, to respect, uh, appreciate, and in a way show our gratitude uh, to him. So I think the, the question that somebody else asked, you know, can it help um, join cultures? See, of course it can, you know, Absolutely. and especially if you take an interest in other people's cultures, like we've done over the years. I mean, for us, uh, one of our proudest moments was when the Straits of Gibraltar Association contacted us and said, would you guys like would like to be our patrons and we thought wow Nosotros? What really? an honor. wow you know it was like what an honor yeah really really truly honor uh, and i think there's no more questions we better round this up and yes us... otherwise we'll have you here all night <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasure it has been priscilla oh, to share absolutely. this with you very, very to much be able so. to talk about your book to mm. people out there that may not know us others that actually know us and they're probably saying see if it's there you know it's true wasn't it <laughs> oh hi from new york daryl from new york hey hello <laughs> how are you wow. wow hope you're keeping well daryl <laughs> thank you for being our fan number one all the way from new york wow. thank you to everyone who's joined us oh vanessa I'm going to oh. write the story of my life. Most definitely, you will both feature in a few <laughs> chapters. Casbah nights. Oh, my God, those Casbah nights. Uh, camel rides. Yes, mm -hmm. the camel trek that we did for charity. Laughter, tears, drama, and so much more. I have oh, invisible yes. thread books available in my office. Please feel free to contact me. Thank oh, you, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. GMI in Tuckies Lane. Vanessa, an amazing person. She does amazing stuff for charity that most people never even find out about. Vanessa, thank you for joining us and reminding us of all those memories that we've lived in those <laughs> Casbah nights, as you say. Priscilla, thank you very much. Thank you all who have thank joined you. us from Milan, New York, uh, all the various parts in Morocco and Gibraltar, of course. Uh, what a pleasure it's been to host this cultural exchange uh, and you know we look forward to the next one mm -hmm. so live from the rock of gibraltar bringing our cultures closer we say good night, good night. and god bless you all thank you